Hi, welcome to our virtual open evening. I'm Jill Curtis, the Transition Manager. Hopefully tonight you'll find out a lot more about our school, our values and our ethos and the kind of education that we offer to our children and hopefully offer to your child in the future. There'll be an introduction from Mr Carlin telling you a little bit more about the school as well as having a look around some of our departments and finding out some more information about our curriculum. There'll also be a chance for some questions and answers at the end of the, the sessions. You'll see at the side of your screen a place to just type in questions. If you do that as you go through, uh, please don't think that we're ignoring you. We're going to just come up to all those at the end um, and hopefully answer any questions or queries that you might have. You should have already received an information pack as well from myself. If you've not, if you could send me an email to openevening at penkethigh.org and I'll make sure that gets sent out to you as well. So hopefully enjoy your evening with us and I'll pass over now to Mr Carlin to find out a little bit more. Good evening and welcome to Penketh High School. My name is John Carlin, I'm the principal of the school and I'm absolutely delighted to be able to welcome you to our open evening event for 2020. I'm saddened and, and disappointed that we're not in a position to be able to, to offer the, the usual open evening style event where you could come to our school site and interact with our, our fantastic staff and wonderful young people. But unfortunately with the, the, the scenario and the situation surrounding the global pandemic, we're not in a position to be able to do that this year. We are hoping that we can substitute uh, what is a, normally a, a very vibrant event with, with this, this virtual um, replacement. Um, and we, we recognise that it won't be the same, but, but we're hoping that it will still allow you to have any, any queries or, or, or questions answered uh, and also provide you with lots of information so that you're in a position to make an informed choice as to whether or not Penketh High School is, is the right school for your, for your son and daughter from September 2021. The evening will be filled up with, with lots of information and, and opportunities to, to, to meet some of our staff and it will also be an opportunity for you to ask any questions at the end of the event in a live Q&A session as well but hopefully we can address those in the evening. I'm going to start this evening um, just really to talk about um, the journey the school's been on over the last two to three years. I'm sure that, that you are you're aware of the, the transformational work that staff have undertaken over the course of the last two to three years which has significantly improved the school and the culture at the school and I ho hope to be able to talk you through, through some of those changes really so you, you gather an understanding of, 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 of what it is that we've done here and what we intend to do going forward. So enjoy the event, uh, as I say I'm very very much, um, very much delighted to welcome you to the school uh, and, and, and look forward to, to meeting some of you in person and speaking to you possibly later on during the, the live Q&A session. Thank you. So once again, thank you very much for joining us. Hoping to be able to 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 now communicate to you some of the core values and principles that that really underpin our school. To see, really, just to, so you can see if they they sort of resonate with with your own values and your expectations of a school, and also hopefully be able to to communicate some of the the, the transformational work that's, that's taken place by staff over the course of the last sort of two to three years, uh, and, and the, the the improvement journey that that we've been on. I think it's really important to discuss my own personal journey at Penketh um, because it really does mirror the journey that the school have been on over sort of the last two decades or so, which sounds really, really scary when I say it like that. But I did start as an NQT at the school in 2004, um, teaching computer science and and, and ICT. Um, in my first week, in fact, we had an Ofsted inspection where we where we achieved a, a good and positive outcome and again in, in 2007. And over the years, I've been I've been really fortunate enough to to, to have a number of roles um, to help support the school. Um, I was a head of year or head of house, as it was called then, assistant principal and and, and vice principal in charge of curriculum, before ultimately um, being able to take on the, the the headship in September 2017 which I was thrilled about uh, and I didn't take that decision lightly um, because the school means an awful lot to me. Um, the young people mean an awful lot to me, the local community does and, and certainly the staff do as well, many of, of whom I've worked with for, for a number of years. And I think we probably all felt in September 2017 that we were at a really low point. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't shy away from that. We, we knew exactly where we were. Results were significantly below national average. The re reputationally, um, 
the school the school was not in a, in, a, in a healthy place and so we knew that collectively we had to do something to really improve standards at the school quickly on behalf of pupils um, and we're also passionate about the school that, that, that we did determined really to, to do that quickly and almost to do what 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 you know whatever it took to, to get to that point so having been here for for a long time and having that that shared experience with with a number of colleagues i think we were we were we were all fairly clear on, on what needed to take place and really that understanding of the school helped me to, to to carve out a vision for what it is that i felt we needed to achieve quickly and our vision really is, is underpinned by, by by three key principles the first is to develop pupils academically that's very very important obviously it's our bread and butter you know we're, we're, we're an academic institution we're a school and so we should be developing pupils academically and we want we want them to leave our school with 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 a good range of, of, of skills and qualifications that sets them up nicely with a strong foundation to be successful beyond the time at Penketh. We also want to develop pupils holistically, give them a wider skill set and, and give, give them an opportunity to sample things that, that potentially um, will, will, will develop passions for life. And ultimately, if we get those those first two points right, then, then that will ensure good life chances for pupils, which is what we want. We want them to be successful lifelong learners. We want them to, to, to go out and enjoy life and, and have opportunities available to them. And, and really, um, our vision is, is all about that end goal and making sure that those, those things happen. So, you know, so what, what are our core values and, and you know, what, what are our very foundation to, to allow us to achieve that vision? Well, the, the first thing is we've got a shared goal and aspiration. You know, you as parents will want um, the very, very best for your for your young person. You will want them to be successful and, ha and have opportunities in life as do we. We've got that shared goal goal with you. Um, and, I, you know, at the, the outset of every single year, I always put a picture of my own children um, as part of the Inset Day presentation, because really that is my, my barometer. Uh, and when we're looking at things in school, um, my barometer really is, is this good enough for my own children? And I know staff also want to take that, that, that view as well, because if it is, then, then, then ultimately we know it's good enough because everyone who attends the school is someone's son or daughter and, and, and we know that you want the very best for them as we do for your children and also for our own. We've got a culture of high expectations and standards. Those, those sort of high expectations are now directly linked to the capabilities of pupils. Having been here for a lengthy period of time, I know how capable our wonderful young people are and ultimately I didn't feel upon taking the role in September 2017 that the expectations of pupils at that time we're in line with their capabilities. They are capable of achieving great things and therefore we should we should expect that. We want to make sure that we generate a climate for learning that facilitates success and by climate for learning, I mean the, the conditions with which pupils can thrive in the classroom and um, a climate for learning that allows teachers to teach uh, and, and impart knowledge and, and deliver skills, but also allows pupils to engage in learning as well. So so we take a, a very dim view of, 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 of disruption um, and, and we, you know, we, we speak continually to people about understanding their responsibility towards their own success as much as the, the responsibility they have towards their peers and their friends, because ultimately their conduct and behaviour and engagements can also impact on other people in the classroom. We want to challenge and inspire pupils so that so that when, when they come into a room, we're really instilling that passion for the subjects that we're delivering. And also what's, what's really important too is, is that that pastoral care. Um, the, the wraparound support that we have for people to make sure that their well-being uh, is, is looked after because you know we know ourselves that if you're worried about something or you're unhappy about something you're not going to perform at your best and so it's important that we have those those networks in place to get support to people when they need it and a huge part of that are the close relationship with, with families in the community uh, I, I was very fortunate enough to go to a, a school that was centered around the community and, and that's something that I really want to sort of instill at the school and, and, and be be centered around the community and our, our school community uh, is obviously made up yes of our pupils but also their extended families and really having those relationships ensures that we can get the very best out, out of your your young people you may pick up on, on things at home that they're not communicating to us similarly we might pick up on things they're not communicating to you so it's 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 that shared goal and aspiration but working collectively and together to make sure pupils have the best opportunities to succeed so I spoke about the, the, the outcomes in, in 2017 in the summer before I, I took over being, being poor. They were exceptionally poor and, and significantly below national average at the time. Um, and obviously that wasn't good enough for our, for our wonderful young people. So the actions that we've, we've, we've sort of put in place, which we'll talk about in a moment over the course of the last two to three years and the transformational work that staff have undertaken have, have paid dividends really. 
Um, so we, we've had a climate of improving results and I'll talk about 2020's results in a moment because obviously it's a bit of a strange picture given that the pupils didn't undertake uh, exams this year. But up until the end of 2019, we had a climate of, of improving results, two consecutive significant uplifts in outcomes and, and our best ever outcomes ultimately in 2019. And it, it doesn't matter what, what, what angle or what measure you want to look at in terms, of, in terms of outcomes and how schools are measured, we've improved in every single one of them. So we achieved our best ever progress in 2019, our best ever proportion of pupils um, achieving both a, at least a grade four in English and maths and also grade five. Best ever proportion of pupils getting five, either H R to C as, as it was now or, or nine to four as it is now, including English and maths at GCSE, our best ever average grade, and it goes on and on and on. So again, you know, every single aspect of our, of our outcomes have improved and that's a really important step on the journey. But for us, it's not about accepting that improvement and, and thinking that that's sort of job done, if that makes sense. Um, really, it's about us recognising that, that we've made those improvements. It sort of validates the actions that, that we've taken, but it's about the next steps and, and continuing to improve and continuing to develop um, the school on, on behalf of the young people. So again, you can see that, that the chart just shows that the progress from 2017, when we were significantly below national average, um, to to position of, of, of improvement in every aspect, both overall in terms of our progress eight outcome, um, the, the progress made in maths, progress made in English, EBAC subjects, which is is uh, a measure of, of of both languages, science, and history, but also our open basket subjects, which are which are any other subject. And we've achieved this with an academically rigorous curriculum. Um, so we, we, we've, we've not done this um, on a particular suite of subjects. 67% of our pupils in, in 2019 undertook the EBAC. Um, and that is to say that they do maths, English, at least two sciences, a language and a humanity as part of their studies with some creative options and, and open options sort of um, wrapping around that, that, that sort of core curriculum. But that 67% um, figure is 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 above national average it's almost double the national average and also almost double the warrington average as well so you know in terms of in terms of our school we've got a very academically focused curriculum uh, that is that is then supported um, by some some really high performing creative options and again i, I don't sort of want want to want to dwell on, on on 2020 too much because it's a bit of a false picture in the sense that um, pupils nationally didn't sit exams this year because of of the global pandemic um, but I, I do think it's important to, to point to the fact that we are confident that we would have continued to improve uh, and you can see that our trajectory in terms of in terms of where we where we feel pupils will, will have been has demonstrated even further improvements um, across again across across all of the uh, across all of the strands of, of, of progress progress the progress eight measure so maths English uh, those EBAC subjects and the open basket subjects all show an improvement and again ultimately that that meaning that our, our overall progress eight um, figure so, so the measure of, of progress that children make across a suite of eight subjects at our school again would have continued to improve and um, I think what's what's again really important to point out is that 73 percent of our young people in, in in the outgoing year 11 undertook the the EBAC so again that is to say undertaking maths English science a humanity and also a language so again just showing the the the, the uh the academic standard at the school really and how academically rigorous our curriculum is um the pupils undertake and again this this is you know we, we talked earlier around sort of the expectations and standards at the school not being aligned with capabilities again you know our young people are exceptionally capable and really our curriculum should reflect that and and, and, and we're pleased now that it does so given the, the the rapid sort of turnaround and the transformational work that, that that staff have undertaken in a relatively short short period of time we're often asked how, how we've managed to achieve that and i think there's a few key things that we can point to the first thing is we do have an, an improved learning focus at the school and um, everything we do is, is related to learning and being successful and all of our, our key messaging to pupils is, is focused around that they they very much now understand the responsibility they have towards their own learning and why it's important um to be successful in school and, and what that can represent for, for, for later life. Um, we have heightened expectations and we've raised those expectations of, of pupils across all aspects of school life, whether that be uniform, um, punctuality, attendance, conduct or, or engagement in, in lessons. Um, 
it's important for us that we have have high standards across every facet facet of school life. And one of the best things we, we've probably done is introduce something called called the learning score scheme, where every pupil is 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 through their register awarded a learning score for every single lesson that they undertake, um, which which allows us to track their engagement in, in individual lessons or across a concentrated period of time, which is really, really useful to be able to support, support pupils. Our expectations, as, as I've touched on before, are now aligned with the capabilities of, of our young people. Our young people are, are exceptional and uh, they're very talented and um, they're capable of great things. And in the past, our expectations haven't reflected that they do now. We've, we've recruited high quality practitioners, which, you know, I, I guess some people would think would, would, would be a given, but it, it's not always the case in schools. Um, we make sure that with our recruitment, we are appointing the best possible people to help continue to improve the school and provide a good quality of education for our young people. And we've had a, a real key driver on, on career professional development, making sure that staff have got access to opportunities to develop their own practice and their own career. Um, our, our concentrated whole school CPD programme is very much evidence based um, and it, it, it's, it's, it's rooted in research to make sure that staff are getting access to the very best and current um, research and information around around pedagogy and around our profession uh, and just by providing staff with, with that concentrated time to improve their practice, ultimately impact positively in the classroom and on the experience that people have. And finally, we, we've provided increased opportunities for people to stimulate engagement. Um, that can be through holistic developments, or, or it can also be through through additional sessions, such as EPS sessions that we offer to pupils, which, which operate after school in preparation for their examinations. Curriculum should be a, you know, a, a really key consideration point for, for parents when thinking about the school that they want to send their, their young their young people to. Um, we've taken a really considered approach in that we, we don't have a one size fits all uh, approach to our curriculum. Uh, we tailor our curriculum to meet the needs of the individual and, and, and the range of pupils that we have here. Um, I've touched on before that our pupils are extremely capable. And so there is a strong academic focus. You know, 73 percent of our young people in year 11 undertook the EBAC last year, those, those strong academic subjects, which we know serve them well at college and university. And that's right because, because of, of the capabilities uh, and, and we feel that that curriculum is, is appropriate for them. Um, obviously that's 40% above the nas national average, but we're, from, from our perspective, we're keen to make sure that pupils get the best possible curriculum. We're not so much chasing a number or thinking about the, the, the progress outcomes that the, the school might get, but what is the very best uh, curriculum that pupils can study that best prepares them for future challenges at colleges, university or employment. We do have a range of creative subjects to supplement a core curriculum and I think it's really important to note that those creative subjects are high performing. Um, I'm sure people in the local area will know that, that sort of 10, 15 years ago we were a creative arts college and they've maintained that strength. So as well as a really strong academic offer uh, and high performing academic subjects, we've also still, still, uh, still possess the, the 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 high performing creative subjects that sit around that 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 core offer uh, as almost like a, a wrap around curriculum so the likes of art music drama all exceed national average by some distance every year and we're really proud of those subjects uh, and, and the heritage that, that, that they bring from 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 previous years at the school our staff as part of the cpd offer that i talked about earlier have, have really remapped curriculums in all subjects uh, we spent 12 months of our time doing that in the background um so not necessarily visible to pupils at the time but we spent a lot of our uh, sort of professional development time focusing on that so that we could make sure that the, the, the curriculum um that we provided from, from year seven and day one in year seven all the way through to the last day in year 11 was well mapped out considered and planned to sort of build on on, on on success and allow pupils to 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 sort of work their way through the curriculum and, and be challenged by 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 the following content so that they're well prepared for exams uh, in year 11 and that's been that's been a, a real good undertaking and when i talk about the ofsted inspection uh, later uh, we'll be able to, to cite the fact that they, they touch on that as a strength of the school and i think it's also important to note that we have a really strong remote offer as well obviously current times we have individuals either self-isolating for a fixed period um, and obviously, we, you know, we also experienced a large period of closure. We've got a very strong remote offer that allows for interaction between pupils and staff and provides um, very clear video resources that supports pupils with, with, with the assignments that are set. And the assignments that are set when pupils are at home really does sort of um, follow on from and mirror the, the, the offer to, to what pupils in their class will be undertaking inside the classroom. Um, 
on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think it'd be remiss of me not to mention the, the Ofsted inspection. Uh, I, I talked before about the fact that, you know, we, we haven't had a, a good judgment at the school since 2007, and that was probably reflective of, of where the school was for, for that period of time. But I'm really pleased to say that, that, the, that the, the work that the staff have undertaken over the course of the last two and a half, three years, have really put the school in, in a strong position. Uh, you know, I've used the phrase transformational a couple of times. The work has been transformational uh, and, and the school is, is, is completely different to where it was in September 2017. And that's really a reflection of, of the hard work and dedication that the staff have shown um, and, and a sort of a, a desire and a commitment to making sure that, that they provided the best provision for our young people. So we, we were awarded a, a, a good provider judgment in, in February when we, when we were inspected. And obviously the, the uh, Ofsted report is available for you to read on the school website, but also if you Google that as well, you, you will be able to find that. I just w wanted to pick out uh, a couple of points. We're thrilled with the report. We, we think it's, it's it's very, very strong. And there's a number of things in there that, that I think parents will, uh, will be pleased to see. But there's a few things that I, that I did sort of want to touch on. I've just pulled out a couple of quotes that I think uh, that I think are important for us to, to, to sort of note. The first is that the parents, carers, pupils and staff said the head teachers transformed the school leadership. And it's really nice of them to sort of say that. But but I have to say that that um, the the senior leadership team and also the middle leaders at the school as well um, ha have helped to transform that leadership. Um, it's been a collective effort. Everyone's taken ownership for their own areas and really driven improvements in their own areas. Um, and, and we're really pleased with with how the leadership uh, of the school has performed in every aspect. It also noted that the the head teacher and trustees promote the highest of ambitions for all pupils and that it's determined to provide the best for them and I'm, I'm really glad they picked up on that because we've talked about the raising of expectations and standards and we do have those highest ambitions uh, for our pupils as, as I've said you know numerous times they are exceptionally talented exceptionally gifted and obviously we, we want to make sure that that that, that, they, that they, don't, they don't waste this opportunity and that they're in a position to, to really uh, provide themselves with a, a solid foundation for future success at college university uh, and within employment as well. And I think these two points are, are really, really key. Uh, the hard work of staff contributes to the good quality of education that pupils receive, and pupils now benefit from a good quality of education day in, day out. When we uh, when we sort of took on the school in, in September 17, we were very mindful of, of the fact that, uh, like a lot of schools, um, results and outcomes can, can almost be, become all-consuming in, in a time when schools are judged in, in such a way. We've taken very much taken the approach that it's the quality of education, it's the most important thing, and that results will come as a result of that. So one of my very clear focus uh, points really was to say to staff, it's about the quality of education from day one in September of year seven, all the way through to the end of, end of year 11. Um, and, and Ofsted really picked up on the fact that in every lesson, there is a drive, there is a challenge, regardless of year group, regardless of distance to, to external exams or any of those things, and pupils are challenged on a day-to-day -day basis to perform well, um, and really they provided with a good quality of education in every single year group and that was really really important to me um i think what what was what, what's also really important that, that came through in the report is that that, that Ofsted recognized the hard work of staff to transform a school culture around in 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 a very short space of time in in two and a half years at that point from, from, from when we started is no mean feat and it's required resilience and it's required dedication from our wonderful staff um, I can't praise them enough that they've got an exceptional quality and an exceptional commitment to our young people and really is their hard work and dedication that has resulted in, in, in the transformational change at this school uh, and, and they do ensure that the pupils do get a, a quality of education, a good quality of education every single day. And I think this, this point is probably probably really important, you know, for parents, but also for pupils as well, because they, you know, Ofsted recognised through, through, you know, the, the, the numerous processes that they undertake during inspection, um, the teachers help pupils to remember by placing emphasis on ambitious and interesting activities. These opportunities stretch and excite people's thinking so that they achieve especially well. And I think it's, you know, it, it's really, really crucial that pupils understand that when they come here, it is going to be an ambitious curriculum. It is going to challenge them in a positive way. It is going to interest them. It is going to stretch their thinking and, and excite their thinking. But that's what education should be all about. And then ultimately, if we do those things on a routine basis from year seven all the way through to year 11, then they will achieve especially well. And that that's 
ultimately what we want for our young people by the, by the end of their time at Penketh, that we've stretched them, we've challenged them, we've, we've ignited a passion about learning, but then they've also achieved really well and that would stand them in good stead for future challenges. And we, you know, we absolutely recognise how important Ofsted is uh, in terms of, uh, you know, particularly to, to, to parents who, who, who I've spoken to in the past and sort of said, you know, we can sense the change of perception about the school. We can see the improvements, um, you know, sort of outwardly looking in. But I think possibly uh, people were sort of waiting to see how that translated into Ofsted and how that translated into outcomes to see if those 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 improvements that were perceived were actually tangible. So we know that that that, that the Ofsted inspection in particular was very important as a validation process to demonstrate to parents that not only are we are we have we already made significant change and in a really good and healthy place, but the appetite at the school is still there to, to make even further improvements and keep driving that improvement on behalf of our young people. But there's, there's other aspects as well that, that, that I think we need to touch on and um, that perhaps aren't as widely known as maybe an Ofsted report. And I'm really pleased to say that this week we found out that our, our maths department has been shortlisted in a group of 10 schools um, for, for maths departments uh, of, of the year 2020 on a national basis. And, and it's really important to point out that we're the only school as well to represent the northwest of England. So that's really recognition um, for the work that they've undertaken over the last four, four years or so um, to become one of, one of the strongest performing math departments, certainly in the town and obviously be recognised now on a national basis. I'm really thrilled with that. Um, and and it's, 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 you know, much deserved recognition for that team. who have done a huge amount on behalf of our people, young people. I'm sure parents are aware as well that, that, that we are part of a, a wider group of schools, a, a multi-academy trust as it's called, and, and we're part of the uh, the Challenge Academy Trust, uh, often, often referred to as TCAT. Um, that's, a, that's a group of schools, uh, a cross-phase group of schools who operate uh, in Warrington. So we are, are, are a, a, you know, a Warrington-based school, which means that we're passionate about, about education in Warrington, and about the young people of Warrington, and we're always keen to support each other to drive school improvements uh, in those institutions. But it means that, that our young people have got, have got very clear education pathways from, from, from the primary schools that are within the trust, like Great Sankey Primary, um, Meadowside, uh, Penka South Primary, etc., uh, all the way through to Priestley College um, and, and sort of A levels and, and, and preparation for university. So they've got that really good transitional process to move through through different TCAT institutions and really get a high quality of education, regardless of the stage of their of their education career at that point. Um, TCAT have been absolutely fantastic uh, for us as a school um, and, and ultimately I think we support each other really well to make sure that our young people get the very best opportunities. And I think it's really important that we've, that we've got some very clear messages for, for the VIPs, the very important people, which, which are the young people, the pupils who, who will be choosing a school to, to attend for the next five years uh, and a school that will, will support them through a, a challenging time of life, the teenage years, and also prepare them um, for, for, those, for those GCSEs um, at the end of year 11 and making sure that they've got a, you know, a really good, strong foundation for the rest of their lives. And what I can say to pupils is that you, you will come to, to this school and have a dedicated and committed staff, mm. a staff that, that uh, are exceptional in, in terms of their quality, but also a very, very supportive of our young people um, and, and will do anything they can to make sure that you get the support that you need across the five years. You've got fantastic support networks. You know, we've talked about TCAT and opportunities there, but also our pastoral care in school as well to make sure that you are well looked after and we can we can support you with any challenges that you may have. And it's an exciting curriculum. You, you will come here and you'll, you'll be excited by learning and excited by the opportunities that are afforded to you. And we've got a huge enrichment program as well. So we've got 50 different clubs that operate across, across lunchtime, um, ranging from Latin, um, we've done some Swedish, Chinese, Mandarin, all the way through to, 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 to art clubs, choirs, sports and activities, um, gaming clubs, and, and ultimately as well through, through the, the first ever makerspace that was open in a UK school, Spark, which, which is also housed at the school as well, which is a STEM space where they do things like um, coding drones, um, robotics, you name it, they do it. So, so it's a really exciting and vibrant place to be uh, and a place where you can, you can feel safe, happy, and also ultimately well supported in your education as, as, you, as you aim for success um, across your time here. What we need from you really is, is to be prepared to be successful, come here with the right attitude, wanting to be successful, uh, open minded and, and really um, keen to strive um, to be the very best that you can be. 
and also prepared to be, to become a valued member of our school community. That's really our, our school community is really important to us, and and everyone who who comes through our door is a valued member of that, and and and, and gets our full support. Should probably talk about our, our, our pupil admission number uh, for the year ahead. We, we've taken a decision to to reduce this to 180, where previously this was this was 240. Um, that's probably bucking the trend. Usually, when when schools become successful, um, they increase the plan to take to take more pupils in. And uh, we've made the the complete opposite decision. Uh, and really, just to explain that, um, it just relates back to to what we said previously. Um, about how important our school community is to us. We know our pupils exceptionally well at Penketh High School um, and, and we don't want to get to a position um, where with the size of a school where, 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 where we don't know our pupils or, or pupils are lost or anonymous as, as, as they go through the process of being here for five years. Um, our young people as individuals are very, very important to us and we just feel that, that, that working with a smaller number would allow us to know them inside out, allow us to have greater relationships with them and greater relationships with their, their families so that we can truly support them um, to, to be very successful uh, during their time with us. Um, we accept that that that, that brings a, a degree of exclusivity, I guess, and, and maybe, maybe a bit more competitive to get into the school. Um, but we think that in the long run, uh, it's, it's the right thing to do uh, and, 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 and will benefit our, our young people. I think obviously we we undertake uh, open evenings each year, and and we do get feedback from parents. And what we what we we tend to do is, is collate the feedback, and and we get some common themes that, that I just sort of want to run through with you you now really. Um, the the first is that that when when parents arrive at our school, they feel as though it's warm and welcoming. It feels more interpersonal than than some of the other schools they've been to, which is important for us because we want that sort of large primary school feel. It's possibly the best way that I can sort of describe it. Um, an openness and, and, and sort of an ability for you to communicate with us and, and, and have those th those relationships to support young people. Um, but also that, that you, you know, you feel as though, as though we are passionate about the school and we're passionate about pupils and the pupils um, will be looked after with good care and support. And that, that's that's really nice to hear those things because, because those things are, are important to us and part of our fundamental values. Um, we also hear some other things uh, that results are not good or improving. Um, we know that, that for some people that has been the perception of this school and hopefully we've demonstrated that that is just not the case anymore. Um, agreed, it has been the case in the you know the very recent past, but we've rapidly addressed that and, and rapidly turned this school around. Um, and so results are good and results have improved and continue to improve. There's also a perception, I'm fully aware that, that, that we're an art school and we're not good with academic subjects. Again, 73% of our of our young people undertake uh, EBAC suite of subjects, um, which are obviously, you know, very, very academic uh, at their core. Um, and that figure sits almost 40% above the national average. So again, I would say that that's an outdated perception uh, in terms of us being an art school. That That is not the case anymore. Um, we are we are a school that, that offers a, a good quality education across all subjects with a strong academic core. Nevertheless, we have those creative and artistic subjects that sit around and, and, and maintain as high performance subjects. And the last point is that buildings aren't as nice as other schools. And I hold my hands up to that on, on the exterior. I would absolutely agree. It doesn't look possibly as appealing as some schools. Um, we are working hard in the background on that. Uh, I can assure you with that. Uh, but we also invest uh, money and, and sort of resource into making sure that the environment that pupils operate in inside the school um, often look a lot better than, than, than people perceive that they, they will. Um, and, and often when we when we do have tours and when we invite people into school, um, their perception is completely different to that. So so I would recommend that, that perhaps if you are worried about that, you do come and, and, and have a tour of the school. Um, you can do that through the form on, on the Sway document that we've issued, or you can email us uh, at openevening at uh, I, I would suggest really that, that you do that um, sooner rather than later so that we can we can get you booked in. Uh, and one thing that, that I would say as well is, is that in relation to the buildings, I understand why that can be an issue, but I would also say that, that what goes on in the classrooms is possibly more important uh, than, than, than the building itself. But I do understand stand, stand that, that perspective. So really tonight, 
does represent the start of a process, a careful selection process that allows you to choose the school that you feel is best for you and your child um, to attend over the course of the next five years. Ultimately, Penkins might not be the right school for you. Um, and, and that's obviously absolutely, absolutely fine. What's really important to me, um, and, and, and I'm sure th you know th the same is true for other schools, is to provide you with as much information as we possibly can to inform your decision making so that you can arrive at, at, at the right conclusion because it is a really, really important decision. Um, anecdotally, I took my own son to some schools last year. Um, I was fairly convinced of the school he was going to go to until I arrived there for their open evening events. Their core values and principles didn't resonate with my own and um, I wasn't happy with the with the environment or, or the the sort of the feel of, of the school and I, ultimately I didn't feel as though he would he would thrive there and so he's gone somewhere else um, and that was a really really positive decision for me because he, he's thriving there and he's, he's doing he's doing really really well and I'm pleased that we, that we made that choice but it was only really by by visiting the school, undertaking the open evenings and going to see and ask questions that I could really, really think about what was right for, for my son um, and, and ultimately making a brave decision that that that, that, that has benefited him in, in, in the long run. So we want to give you that information. There may be things tonight that, that, that we don't cover that you want to ask us about. Please do email or, or ring us. We'll always respond to those. And obviously, bear in mind that tonight is a bit of a show, you know, and I'll be dead honest about that. It's about us showcasing the, the best of the school as it is. Um, for every school so i would urge you to come and see us in action come and book a tour come and have a conversation with us um to, to really address any points that, that that we haven't um through this evening or or, or just have a one-to-one -one dialogue with us um if, if you feel more comfortable doing so rather than, than asking some questions through through a remote a remote um a remote process um, you can book a tour, as I said before, by co contacting open evening at penketh.org. And one final point is I would urge you to, to, to follow us at Penketh School on Twitter. Um, the reason I would do that is not because we're trying to swell our, our, our number of followers, um, but, but really um, because we, we tweet um, multiple times a day to give parents uh, and our local community just an insight into what's going on in school and it will just give you a bit more information as to the things that are happening at school on a regular basis and i think that's really really important um you can you, can, you don't have to be a member of twitter to do that you can just uh, look at our accounts uh, if you just search, search via google uh, but also uh, our most recent tweets are available on the the, the home page of our of our website as well so so really just want to say thank you very much for attending um obviously you're now going to be able to to, to see a number of our departments in action uh, over the course of the next 50 minutes or so before we have a live q a process at the end so please enjoy the virtual tour uh, enjoy the, the the individual sessions and i look forward to speaking to to, to some of you um, in person or via the live Q&A uh, at the end of the session. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to the Science Department Open Evening Presentation. I'm Miss Salmack, Key Stage 3 Coordinator in Science, and I'm going to talk you through all of the things you've got to look forward to in science. First of all, let's meet some of the teachers. We have Miss, Mrs. Courier, Head of Science and Biology. That's me, Miss Salmack, Key Stage 3 Coordinator. Miss Hurst, Mr. Bone, Miss Martland, Miss Blundell, Mr. Doyle, Head of Chemistry. Dr. Gardner, Head of Physics, and Mrs. Lee. Here is our curriculum overview for Key Stage 3. You can see that we have interleaved some important concepts across the three years, such as cells, which appears in organisms in year seven, and reproduction, digestion and ecosystems in year eight, and cells to systems in year nine. In year nine, GCSE is started in the summer term to allow two full years to study for the GCSE exams. Now we have the Key Stage 4 curriculum. All pupils follow the combined science course, which will give you two GCSEs unless you choose triple science, where you get three GCSEs and you study more topics in greater detail. For example, you can study space in summer term in year 10 and in autumn term in year 11. In year seven, you will study cells and movement, particles and matter, 
separating mixtures, magnetism and earth, reactions, electricity, reproduction, ecology, genetics and acids and alkalis. At college, you can study a number of courses that link to science, such as A-levels in biology, chemistry and physics, sport science, applied science, animal behaviour and engineering. Also, many careers that our students decide to follow also involve science, like being a nurse, a doctor, a research scientist, physiotherapist, zookeeper, vet, engineer, teacher or lecturer. In science, we complete lots of fun and interesting experiments. Here are some you could try at home. First, you could try to build the water cycle in a bag. All you need to do is draw the diagram of the water cycle, which you can research, put some water in the bag, seal it, and place it on a warm, sunny windowsill and watch the water cycle. You could make some DNA out of sweets. You could make your own pitfall trap. You might need permission though to dig a little hole in the garden. You could design a habitat for your favourite animal or you could create a model of the earth. Stay tuned for the upcoming demonstration of one of your future practicals. Hi everyone, I'm Miss Thalma and I'm Key Stage 3 Coordinator at Penketh and I teach science. So this is my science lab and I'm just going to show you an investigation that you could do in September when you join us. So what we're going to investigate is how the different types of metals affect the colour of the Bunsen burner flame. So the first thing you have to do is light the Bunsen burner. So we always make sure that the hole is closed, turn the gas on when you're ready to light it and there you've got your safety flame. So it's called the safety flame because you can see it because if it wasn't there, it could burn yourself. Okay, so when we're doing the experiment, you have to turn it onto a roaring flame, which you may be able to hear. So it almost looks invisible. And what we're going to do is I'm going to dip this wire into some hydrochloric acid just to clean it. And the first metal we're going to look at is lithium. So this is lithium chloride. So it's mixed with some chlorine. So I'm just going to do it a bit more so that it sticks to it. Okay, and you should see a nice red flame. Okay, so that's our first one. Pretty nice. Okay, second one, we have got this blue solid, which is copper sulfate. So it's got copper in it. So that's our next metal. So hopefully it should be a different colour. Let's have a look. Well, there we go. So we've got a lovely green colour this time. So you would write that down in your table. Okay, next one is, I'm just going to clean it again is sodium chloride, so this time sodium is our metal. And then if we put it into the flame, we get a really bright orange one. Not quite as fancy, but it's still pretty nice. Okay, two more to go. Next one, give it a quick clean again, is calcium chloride. You might have heard of calcium before. It's in milk, it's in your bones, and it actually burns with a more reddy, orangey kind of flame. And the next one is my favourite one, it's the nicest colour I think, and it's potassium chloride. So if we dip this in, try and get a bit more to show you, and you get a lovely pinky purple flame, or maybe lilac you could call it. Okay, there we go. And that's our experiment finished. So you, can, you would write those down in your table. I have to turn the collar back onto the safety flame and then I'm going to turn my Bunsen burner off. Okay, hope you enjoyed the demonstration and I hope to see you in September. Thank you. Welcome to English. I'm Miss Ashurst. I'm the Director of Learning for English. Here in our department, we believe that English is fundamental, not just as a lesson on the school curriculum, but also in life. Having the ability to read and write well is so important, as is having a wide vocabulary. 
Words really do allow you to have power in many situations and having the best vocabulary to make yourself heard with will make you stand out from others. And here is the team. There's me at the top left, Miss Padgett, who is in charge of Key Stage 3 English and she also runs our lunchtime Harry Potter Club. There's Miss Grant, who's in charge of English Literature and Mrs Mollett, who's in charge of English Language and the Library. There's Miss Redmond, she writes the weekly news and runs Board Games Club at lunchtime. Miss Lowe is a pupil intervention lead. She's in the pastoral team. She's a head of year and she's also head of upper school. Mr Howarth, he's the newest addition to our team this year. Mr Graham is in charge of Duke of Edinburgh, which you can sign up for and go camping and take part in other activities to challenge you. And Miss Curtis, she's in charge of literacy and you may have heard from her already as she's in charge of your transition from year six to Penketh High School. So you can see our five year curriculum here. In years seven, eight and nine, we try to have an overarching theme across the year and then each term has a different focus. I'll talk in a bit more detail about year seven in a minute, but if we just have a little look at year eight, we can see the overarching theme is power and conflict, adventure and discovery. In term one, we take this theme and we focus on it specifically on man's relationship with the weather and with a focus on Shakespeare's The Tempest. Then still looking at that main theme of power, conflict, adventure and discovery, we look at war poetry and other texts associated with the theme of war. And then again, still continuing with that theme, we look at John Steinbeck's novel of mice and men. So each of those years, seven, eight and nine, have this overarching theme. Now, we follow in year 10 and 11, the AQA language and also the AQA literature syllabus. We'll prepare you really well for both those GCSEs so that when you come to take those two exams, you're going to be incredibly confident. So let's take a look at what exactly you will learn in year seven. Our overarching theme is, as you can see, love, relationships and betrayal. We take that theme and in term one, we study poetry and we look at a range of poems, both traditional, studying the romantic poets such as Wordsworth, coupled with poetry from very modern poets such as the previous poet laureate, Carol Ann Duffy. Then in the second term, we take the idea of betrayal and relationships as we look at Shakespeare's Macbeth. You examine the characters and the themes. And then in the final term, you look at a range of texts, mainly short stories, mainly prose texts, maybe one or two poems and one or two nonfiction, but mainly it'll be looking at prose texts and how relationships are presented in a range of short stories from a range of countries and cultures from across the world. Now, once you leave us with a good pass at GCSE, you'll be prepared for any apprenticeship or college place. Most colleges require you to have a pass in English language. A good GCSE grade in English will prepare you for studying anything really, specifically perhaps A-levels in English language or English literature, but any A-level or BTEC course will require you to have a good standard of English because that shows that you can read, understand and analyse a range of texts and also that you can write and express yourself well, which is a skill that most employers know is important. Now, if this was a normal open evening, you would have gone round to various English classrooms and done a range of different English activities. As it is, we've got one for you that you can try at home. You need a dice. If you haven't got a dice, you can use the link that's on the top of the screen. So the first roll of the dice will tell you the type of poem that we want you to write. And it corresponds with the numbers on the left there, one through to six. So if you roll a three, we want you to do a shape poem, which is a poem that's in the shape of the thing that you're writing about. Now, that topic that you're writing about, that subject, is going to be indicated by the second roll of the dice that you make. So if you were to roll a three again, you would be writing a shape poem about a superhero. And then we want you to roll the dice again a third time. And that will 
tell you the type of mood or tone. So whatever number you roll, you look in the column on the right hand side and it'll tell you the kind of mood that we want you to create. Now, just to help you, um, we've got a little example of a limerick, a haiku and an acrostic poem if you're unsure about what types of poems they are. Um, have a go at this activity and if you want to email it into the English department, we'll have a look and give you some feedback. Now, right at the start of this video, I introduced you to the members of our team and one of those, Mrs Mollett, was in charge of um, English language and also the library. Well, here's what um, your library looks like. This was taken um, on the day it was opened by a local author. Um, it hasn't changed very much in the way that it looks, um, it just hasn't got the balloons and the ribbon, but it's there for you to come and use when you come to join us. Um, there will be an opportunity to go down every fortnight um, as part of your English class and also it'll be open at lunch times for you to come in, do some work, browse our books and it really is a lovely space and we're so pleased with it. So because you can't actually physically be with us on open evening, I've included some still images so you get an idea of what the department's like. You can see the English corridor and also I've included a couple of still images of the walls of two of our English classrooms. That's fairly typical of the displays about the text that we study that you'll see when you come to Penketh High School and when you start to have your lessons in the English corridors and in the English classrooms. Good evening everyone, welcome to the Maths Department. I'd like to say a big welcome to all parents, grandparents, carers that are, have joined us this evening, but more importantly to all the, the children in year five and year six who are, are really starting to think about the school that they want to go to when they leave primary school. Uh, I'd just like to introduce you to the team. So we've got Miss Harding here, who is our Director of Learning for Maths. We've got Mrs Strachan and Mr Musgrove, who are second in department, and Mrs McClaw. We have Mr Madhu, Miss Taylor, Mr Smith, and myself, Mr. Farrah. I just want to talk to you briefly about uh, math performance here at Penketh High School. And, you know, we're the kind of school that tells people exactly as it is. Uh, and when we had Ofsted in 2015, the math department was highlighted in terms of needing improvements um, for the progress of students in math. And uh, so that was something that we needed to act on for, for the life chances of our young people. Um, immediately following that, then, there was a, a comprehensive curriculum overhaul um, looking at um, the lessons, assessment and homework in, in total. There was also a new team of staff put together to supplement the existing strong teachers that we had in the department. I think one of the biggest things that we did to, to combat performance was there was an absolute equal importance and focus on every year group. Um, I think the, the school were possibly a little guilty of putting too much into year 11 um, and not fully focusing on every year group. So with um, the correct curriculum sequencing, and us as a department demanding the highest of expectations and engagement. I'm just going to move myself, excuse me. Um, that results in the math department have increased year on year for the last five years, up to a point where in 2019, in terms of math results, saw so Penketh High sitting third in Warrington, with only King's Leadership and Lim High School with higher math results than us. So in terms of where we were to where we are now, maths at Penketh High School is a real strength. In terms of what you'll do with us here in year seven, you'll do nine units overall, uh, and the, there are four main topics of maths, algebra, number, shape, and data. In the autumn term, you'll study algebra one. Uh, one of the topics that you'll do will be to construct and solve linear equations, which sounds really complicated, but basically finding the value of X. Uh, shape three is a unit that's all about transformation, so how you can change shapes. Uh, and then number one is a topic that you'll be more used to. Um, so looking at four operations and wordy exam problems, looking at factors and multiples and so on. Um, I'd like to introduce you now to Mr Musgrove. Mr Musgrove is uh, in charge of enrichment and competitions trips at Penketh High School. So we'd like to talk to you a little bit about that. Hi everybody, uh, thanks Mr Farrah there for introducing. Um, I've 
mainly in maths, I'm in charge of the trips, competitions, anything outside of the classroom to help you have a better experience of maths at Penkup High School. So each year we try and try and get lots of opportunities for our students for every year group. Um, obviously the situation is a little different at the minute, but we're still going to um, try to involve as many students as we can. Some examples of some of the stuff we did last year, we, we took year 10 to maths in action lectures with some leaders from industry explaining how they use maths in their role. Um, we went to some, took some year 11 to a very similar thing with uh, leading experts explaining how maths takes part in their everyday life. And we also went to a, an opportunity at the University of Lancaster where we spent the whole day talking about women and, and their role in maths and how they can play an important part. There's also a competition that we run each year. Um, here's, here's Charlotte in year seven. She won um, a book from Simon Singh, um, a famous mathematician that writes books about maths, but this is a weekly competition. It's really, really good and it stretches our most able mathematicians. Um, we've got Chess Club. This is a really popular club that we run in my room and it's, it, uh, you know, we have a really high attendance each week. University trips, we've taken students to university, experience higher education. And um, we also had the Bank of England come in last, last year to talk to some year nines and explain how the bank works and how their role in the, um, in the economy. And we also try and take part in lots of challenges. Here's our, a couple of our year uh, eights and nines taking part in the UK and team maths challenge. So there's lots of opportunities, lots of things you can do um, outside of the curriculum, outside of the classroom. Um, really hope that when you come here, you take full advantage of all those opportunities. I'll hand back now to Mr. Farish to explain uh, the last few bits of maths. Thanks. Okay, thanks Mr. Musgrove. Um, just a, a really good way to highlight all the opportunities outside of the classroom in terms of enrichment for math. So as Sir said, get yourself involved. Uh, the last two things I want to talk about are what you can do with maths um, when you leave us. So post 16 means um, what you do after GCSE. So of course, you know, there's A-level maths and further maths, but there are lots of courses that involve mathematics. Engineering and economics has proved particularly popular uh, over the last couple of years. And then thinking further into your future, you know, we've listed just a few careers here that need you to be to be good at maths and to, and to be able to have a good grasp of that. Um, you know, even things such as, you know, you want to be an astronaut. I, one of our school mottos is dare to dream. And it's so important to have that that concept, really. You know, there's no limit on what you can do. You know, you can go and be anything. You can go and do anything as long as you've got the vision and the hard work to go with it. And finally, I have a little challenge for you. So I'm just going to move myself over here. So uh, if it was a normal open evening, you'd be in class and we'd be doing this with you. And we don't want you to miss out on that. So what we'd like you to do is create your own maths clock. So instead of the numbers one, two, three and so on, that's a boring clock, isn't it? What we'd like you to do is make the most complicated equations and sums that equal the numbers. So you can see here, this one's not very exciting, is it? One take away zero is one. Get that, that's fine. Um, but, you know, there, there are lots of examples of equations here that equal the numbers that they should. So for example, this one, the square root of 10 squared is 10 itself. So what we'd like to do is make your own math clock. You can do it on the computer or you can draw it. Take a picture of it and send it to this email address here, matt at penketh.warrington.sch.uk. And that'll come to all of us math teachers. Um, I'll put your name in primary school and we'll post some uh, of the very best examples on our website. So it's just a, a final thank you from me uh, for dropping in this evening and we hope to see you all soon. Take care. Welcome to the Geography Department at Penketh High School. I'm Miss Robinson, the Head of Geography. In the department, there's myself, Miss Cropper, Mrs Rigby and Mr Barlow. We are a dedicated and committed team striving for the best outcomes for all our pupils. In the geography department, we follow a knowledge rich curriculum that is rigorous and robust for all pupils to access. It encompasses four key concepts outlined in the geography national curriculum, location knowledge, place knowledge, human and physical geography and geographical and field work. 
Here's the curriculum overview. From year seven to year 11. Our curriculum interleaves throughout the five years building on previous knowledge. For example, in year seven, pupils will study coasts, then move on to rivers and then to Russia. At key stage three, pupils will also get the chance to undertake field work with the relevant topic. At key stage four, year 10 and year 11, pupils will study their GCSE geography. This will be the AQA exam, which will consist of three different papers. What will you learn in year seven? In year seven, we'll start by looking at its our planet, looking at how the earth formed and how life evolved. Then we'll move on to our key map skills, looking at grid references to point our life. Then we'll focus on a location, which will be the UK, looking at the landscape to the culture. Then we'll look at the coast, ecosystems, and finally we'll look at Africa with a focus on Kenya. Here are some post-16 and career options. There are many career links to geography and that's what makes our subject book so fantastic. For conservation to weather broadcaster to town planner, these are all vital roles in the modern in industry. Post-16, pupils may go on to study A-level geography, A-level geology, or undertake an apprenticeship in engineering or the civil service. Why not try some geography at home? Write a postcard from the favourite place you have visited. Draw a map of your journey to school. Get baking, design your biscuit with a flag for the world, or create your own modern volcano. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon. Welcome to the History Department at Penketh High School. I'm Mr Bell, the Head of History. In the History Department, there's myself, Miss Newby and Miss Brocklehurst. We are a team dedicated to inspiring students' curiosity to know more about the past and delivering an outstanding curriculum. Our curriculum is designed to build upon the historical knowledge and skills students gained at Key Stage 2. Our curriculum is designed to help pupils gain a coherent knowledge and understanding of Britain's past and that of the wider world. Our students become equipped to ask perceptive questions, think critically, weigh evidence, sift arguments and develop perspective and judgment. Pupils learn of the complexities of life and the challenges of their time. Here's a curriculum overview of both Key Stage 3 and 4. Our curriculum is designed so that pupils learn chronologically, but also build upon themes each year. The five themes we focus on are political power, British society, discrimination and rights, the power of beliefs and war and conflict. At Key Stage 4, pupils will study the Edexcel GCSE. This will consist of three exam papers. So, what will you learn in Year 7? In Year 7, we will start by looking at historical skills in the context of a local study of Warrington over the last 1,000 years. Then, we will move on to the Norman Conquest and its impact on Britain. Then medieval religion and monarchs. Then the Black Death. Then we move on to the Reformation and the impact of Henry VIII and the Tudors. Finally, we will look at Native American civilization and culture. So why is history such an important subject? Here are some post-16 career options. History is a useful and often necessary subject for a wide range of careers, not just the obvious ones. History is a highly desirable qualification for careers in law, government, media, and many others. So why not try some history at home? You can make a board game about a historical period of your choice or follow a Victorian biscuit recipe or visit a historical site in the area you live in or even create a model castle. Thank you and we hope to see you soon. Hello everybody and welcome to the Modern Foreign Languages Department here at Penketh High School. I hope that you're enjoying the virtual open evening so far. Um, if you have any questions at the end of our session, please feel free to send us an email um, and we'll answer any queries that you might have. So first of all, I would like to introduce you to the teaching staff that we have in the MFL department. 
we have Miss Riley, who is the curriculum area leader. We've got Mr. De Burke, who is the second in department. Uh, and then we've got teachers, Mrs. Hart, Miss Silver and Miss Murray. We all teach a variety of languages, um, French, German and Spanish. And we also offer some extra languages as enrichment clubs, for example, Mandarin Ch Chinese and Latin. So what do we study in language, in language lessons here at Penketh High School? Uh, we cover a, a number of different topics across the five year groups, starting with things like myself, my family and friends, hobbies, etc. Uh, and as we move through the year groups, we cover topics such as holidays, travel and tourism, technology and social media, partnerships and marriage, festivals, future studies and careers. So we cover a real variety of topics from when we start in year, in year seven, so that when you leave us in year 11, you'll have a really comprehensive knowledge of the language that you've been studying. So you might have noticed that we revisit a number of topics at different points throughout the different year groups. For example, in year seven, you'll start off on the topic of myself, my family and friends. Here you would learn about the basics in vocabulary and the present tense while, whilst you're just starting out with the language. You'll then revisit this topic again in year nine with my relationships and friendships, where we would then introduce the past tense and some more in-depth vocabulary and linguist linguistical structures. And then would visit, again, visit it again in year 10 with partnerships and marriage, where um, we would then introduce a third tense with the future tense structures um, and would deepen, deepen our knowledge of topical vocabulary and really consolidate our knowledge and skills um, that we've learned across the five years um, and would then combine a variety of high level structures and, and um, different tenses. Um, it's really important that we adopt an effective learning model that provides our pupils with a really solid language education to allow them to then take this further into their futures beyond high school and this curriculum overview really does that. So what will you learn in your MFL lessons if you join us at Penketh High School in September? Well, we start off with the my family and me topic, moving on to talking about your friends before looking at hobbies, covering topics such as sport, free time activities and so on. We will then look at the topic of school, learning how to speak about your everyday life at school, opinions on different subjects and equipment. And we'll finish off with my lifestyle, where we will look at food, healthy eating, eating out, sports and exercise. So overall, it's a really nice start to your language learning journey with lots of opportunities for hard work whilst also having some fun. So what is the point in learning a language and, and why do we learn modern foreign languages at high school? Um, well, knowledge of a, of a different language or a GCSE in a different language provides you with lots of opportunities beyond high school. So if we start with looking at post-16 opportunities, you could go on to study a language at A-level at college. You could go into an apprenticeship in the hospitality sector, sector uh, where using another language is, is, is absolutely seen as an asset. You can use your language skills in the army. You can study a BTEC in the travel and tourism industry, for example, in aviation. You can study business either at A-level or as a B-Tech, combining it with a language which would then open up international opportunities, both within our region, but also overseas. There are many jobs where having the ability to speak a foreign language are necessary and some where it's seen as a huge advantage to be able to speak a foreign language. For example, you could go into translating and interpreting. You could go into children's book writing. You could be a YouTuber or a podcaster. You could be a flight attendant dealing with people and customers from all over the world. You could be a liaison officer, a tour guide, a game translator, a teacher, a journalist or a foreign correspondent reporting on news from around the world. You could be a fashion buyer communicating with fashion brands from different countries. There are so many opportunities that languages provide you with, many of which we haven't even got around to mentioning here. Um, so that's why it's so important that we have languages on the curriculum. So here are some activities that you can try out at home to get the feel of what it's like to study a language. Um, we've got a French activity, learning the numbers from one to 20. You can learn the colours in Spanish with the second link, animals in French on the third link. 
days of the week in German on the fourth link and in the final link you can learn about the weather in Spanish. We'd really love to see how you get on with these activities so why not send us a tweet on Twitter at the Penketh High School um, and let us know how you've got on. So unfortunately you aren't able to come into school and see our classrooms for yourselves at the moment so we wanted to give you a sneak peek of what to expect from our languages classrooms. We've got very vibrant classrooms where all pupils are able to engage allowing you to develop uh, communication skills and confidence. All of our classrooms are respectful environments where pupils don't judge each other and everyone can really try your best. All of this is done through activities that build pupils resilience and creativity, for example trapdoor tasks um, which encourages communication within the classroom with, with, between peers and also games um, where, we, where we're practicing vocabulary which also uh, encourages communication and, and confidence building. So finally, thank you for coming online to learn all about our school and to hear all about the languages department. We really hope that we can see you all very soon in school. Bye. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Miss Jenkins and I'm head of art. Um, and welcome to Open Evening um, as it is remote. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the department and the sort of things that we do with Year 7 as well. So you've got a sort of an idea of what's going on. As you can see, Mrs. is going to scroll around my classroom at the moment. So it's all been adapted for remote learning where all my students are facing the front. And you can see for all of my lessons, I sort of set out um, everybody's sketchbook as, as we go along so the kids come in and they're straight up to learning. Um, you can see behind me some of the, the lovely display, display work that we have. This was last year's GCSE um, class um, which I think got 96% pass rate at um, A star, A star star to, to C which is a, 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 nine, a 9 to 4. Um, so they did very well. Normally our pass rate is well within the 90s, you know, sort of 92-93%. And that's been the case for very many years and prior to that we were sort of 89, 88. But we are scoring in the 90s and um, we are quite renowned for our art and design work here. As you can see, our students work um, exceptionally hard. We have a process called fabric screen printing, which allows you to get your image on screen and then print it up. Um, and this is something that's just uh, available to a couple of schools in Great Britain. There's about six schools that have that facility to do that. So, um, you know, they're, they're, whenever the examiner comes in, they're always very complimentary about those because usually it's only done in, up to, um, to university sort of standard really and it's been commented on. Right, now then, um, year seven, um, uh, they have one hour of art a week and that's generally in this room or in, in P14 um, with myself and Mr Billington. We also offer digital art as well, um, which is all done on computers, but that doesn't happen until they opt in year 10 and year 11. So it's a three year course GCSE with one hour um, a week. Um, all students have a little sketchbook that they have here. And then what we're able to do in there as well, we start off with a sort of drawing activity, um, which they sort of copy and observe what they're looking at here, different mark making and drawing techniques, because it's not just one way of doing things in art sort of slips then where we give them um, comments um, and advice and praise and where they can go next and then they reply on the back there so we know that they've taken note and they've taken that into consideration. This is one of the first projects we do, it's on an artist called Hundavasa and um, what we do is we, we very much work in a formulaic way which is very much synonymous with the national curriculum. So for a start, we start looking at the artist's work and analysing it and, and a bit of bi bibliographical detail as well and a bit of information about the artist as well. And then where we go on from there is um, we go on then to do some little studies and little drawings and make up our own Hundavasa composition. And we normally then analyse the work, but unfortunately this is a book from last year and we didn't actually see that through. So they then analyse and refine what they're doing. So they try things out in different ways. So there's only one example here. You can see then this will, this will result in, in, in an outcome. 
Um, and this is one of the outcomes that was produced. Uh, not quite finished, unfortunately, because we didn't have the time. Um, but you can see where that was going to go, really. Um, I don't think she finished our orange, started over here, and there's some areas that are blank, and we didn't work up into the background. But um, Miss will show you in a couple of minutes of display of year seven work that's on the wall up there. So I put a lot of the finished ones up. I think it's important. Um, to be putting work up on the wall so students can see that our expectations and the standards they should produce and be producing. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard year seven come in and go, oh, let's look at that wall, who did that? And I'll say, oh, my year 11s. And they'll say, oh, I'll never be able to do that, miss. And then they get to year 11 and guess what? They do do it. Now, the other um, project that we've got is an artist called Kimmy Cantrell. So we're looking at traditional artist here, Hundabata, who's very infamous. And then you're looking at um, a contemporary artist here, uh, somebody called Kimmy Cantrell, and um, he's, he's self-taught and he made these sort of um, ceramic sort of masks. He's inspired by primitive art and he's also inspired by tribal art, you can probably see that in his work. And he's self-taught and he worked in, in ceramics or clay. So what we do is we make ours out of cardboard, as you can see here, and gum strip and they're painting and they're mark making, which links back to some of the stuff obviously that they've been doing prior in the sketchbook, this is a mark making activity that they did at the very beginning. So some things will cross over as we go along. Now, as a teacher, I think it's very important to show students how to do things. And I will always demonstrate and model um, work for them so they know what to do. More recently this year, I have been recording all of my lessons. So if students are off, there's the remote opportunity, not only to just read written instructions, but also to see um, the, the actual demonstration within the lesson. So that includes students asking questions and me answering them and things like that. So they sort of get the taught experience. It's also very handy as well that I can put it on Teams if a student has missed a lesson and just needs to catch up. So I think it's very important as well to model good sort of standards. Now this is my example here. This is my little sketchbook here. And then what I will do, whatever the students are going to do, I will tend to do it in my sketchbook because they can see then how it is done and how it is built up and um, that goes through different processes as we go along on the videos it's not all done in one go so it's a bit blue peterish if you like but it's it's there to inform so um so so yes we're, we're a very successful for subject um been here a long time some of you might be looking at me and think oh, I remember her and i have been here for 29 years so um for the last only 10 years maybe i've started to teach what were my students children so um um, I've always enjoyed working here, it's a lovely school and that's why I've been here so long and you, if you are considering sending your, your child here, please do, it's a fabulous experience. Thank you very much. Hi and welcome to the Physical Education Open Evening. PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so firstly, let's meet the staff. My name is Mr. Mullock. I am curriculum area leader of PE. We also have three other members of staff who teach on the PE curriculum. There is Miss Fleming, Mr. Pinder, and Miss Salisbury, who also teaches dance. So our curriculum overview. Um, in, at Key Stage 3, that's in Year 7, 8 and 9, the boys and girls have different curriculums. The boys cover a lot of different sports over the three years. Um, during each year, they will do units of work on rugby league, basketball, badminton, football, table tennis, health-related fitness, cricket and athletics. For the girls, they will also do football, to do gymnastics, health related fitness, trampolining, netball, dance, rounders and athletics. There'll also be some wet weather lessons where we do things like dodgeball, benchball, a few other sports as well. At GCSE in year 10 and 11, we run a qualification called the BTEC Sport Level 2 First Award and that's split into four different units. There's leading sports activities, there's a practical sports performance unit. And in year 11, there's a fitness for sport and exercise, which is an exam based unit. 
And then finally, at the end of year 11, there is applying the principles of personal training. As I say, the fitness and, fitness and sport and exercise unit is um, an exam based unit where it's an hour and 15 and out of 60 marks. The other three units are coursework based where pupils um, are assessed in a variety of different ways um, or depending on what the um, current criteria is. So here's some examples of what you'll learn in year seven. So different, different sports, different topics that both the boys and the girls cover. As well as on the curriculum, we have lots and lots of different um, enrichment activities that may be at lunchtime or after school. We also run school teams in lots of different sports, such as for the boys, football, rugby, basketball, badminton, table tennis, cricket, athletics. Again, for the girls, they do girls football, they do girls rugby, netball, athletics, rounders. Okay, so possible different careers and options you have after your GCSE, so post 16. They could be things like A-level phys physical education or A-level sports studies. There are lots of different um, colleges that offer BTEC Sport Level 3 courses, which could possibly be um, either a single A-level, double A-level or even a triple A-levels worth. Okay, and there are also sports-based apprenticeships as well, post 16. Possible careers that you could go into if you are interested in sport are things like sports therapy, a physiotherapist, PE teacher, sports scientist, sports coach, personal trainer, gym instructor, and there's many, many more. Okay, so here's uh, some examples of what your PE lessons might look like. As you can see from the, from the pictures, there's some um, of our year nine sports leaders there. They are leading different sports. You can see our, our, on our ASP turf, on our rugby pitch, on our netball courts, um, and in our sports all as well. Okay, so we have some great facilities here at Penketh. Okay, a full-sized um, football type astroturf, sand-based. We have, uh, again, a full-sized rugby pitch, which doubles as our 200 meter athletics track. We have um, three netball courts, which again, double as tennis courts. We have a large indoor sports hall, which is a four badminton court sports hall, which we do a lot of basketball and badminton in. We also have a small gymnasium where we do uh, gymnastics and basketball and we have a dance studio okay where we do dance and, and sometimes gymnastics as well we also have near the entrance to school another two football pitches and um, a small one which year seven play their games on and a larger one for year 11. okay year five and six uh, thanks for listening and we hope to see you soon. Hello and welcome to the Orchard Centre. My name is Mrs Org and I'm the Senko at Penketh High. It is my job to support pupils who may need any additional help to make progress. I am Jake and I have had help from the Orchard Centre. The SEN team are amazing and they have helped me since I started in Year 7. Sometimes a TA may help you in the classroom or take you out for intervention. The support offered is personalised to the needs of the young person, but help is offered around the four areas of SEN need. Communication and interaction, cognition and learning, social, emotional and mental health and sensory and physical needs. The most important people that we work with are the pupils and their families. However, we may sometimes have to refer to an external agency to ask for an assessment, strategies or advice. The help that we give is personalised to the needs of the young person. This year, we are already supporting Year 7s with in-class support, maths and English interventions, speech and language programmes, motor skills and a chat and chill area which provides a quiet area at break. It is important that staff in school know about and understand how they can support pupils on the SEN register. Using information from primaries and pupil voice, we develop a pupil passport that is accessible to all staff. 
This highlights strengths and barriers and offers strategies to help a pupil. This passport is a working document and is amended as we learn more about the pupil. We work closely with a number of colleges and education providers to ensure a smooth transition for our pupils post-16. Additional transition days and visits, as well as careers guidance, can be organised if needed. We are often asked by families how they can help prepare their child for high school. If you just do one of the things from the slide here, try and get your own equipment ready for school each day, and that will really help you in preparation for Year 7. Hi, I'm Mrs Vestel and I'm the lead teacher up here in the designated provision at Penketh High School. We've got a few students here who are going to tell you how fantastic it is to be a member of Penketh High School and how great it is in the Orchard Centre. The, people, the teachers are very kind and they want to try your hardest. The classrooms are great and they give you a lot of resources to help you. If you need help, the teachers are, are, are always there. We hope to see you soon. Hi guys, I'm Caitlin Conroy, I'm president of the Pupil Leadership Team and I'm in Year 11. I'm sorry for being in my peak at today, just ignore the fact that I'm not in my usual, usual school uniform. Uh, hi guys, I'm Jack Bracegirdle and I'm the Vice President of Pupil Leadership Team. Hi, I'm Poppy Williams, I'm also in Year 11 and I share the role of Vice with Jack. My job as president of the Pupil Leadership Team is to sort of just oversee it all. Uh, yes, yeah, so my and Poppy's job is the same, just oversee the general goings on of what's been happening within the team. Yeah, we work with the heads of communities and we basically just make sure Caitlin's doing her job. <laughs> so we all have different experiences coming into high school. For me, I came with the intention of making some new friends um, and those friends I made in year seven are actually still my closest friends now. Um, yeah, so I just came from Sankey Primary down the road, so that was just the same core group of friends pretty much from year one up to year 11. Yeah, I kind of had a bit of a mix. So I came to high school with a few friends, but I've actually grown away from them. So um, now I just kind of flit around. <laughs> Basically, we're just letting you know that you don't need to stress about making new friends. Um, obviously, I came with the intention of making new friends, but I'm still friends with people from primary school. So just don't worry. It's very easy to do, isn't it? Yeah, especially with all of your classes, your form, you'll meet so many new people and probably people who have a lot of common with you. So it'd be great. So obviously you'll be doing a lot of different lessons in high school. Now at the moment, they're pretty much based in the same classroom, but obviously you'll be doing loads of new subjects. So, you know, I'd really look forward to that. Yeah, so it breaks the lunches as well, your whole year groups together still. So another great opportunity to meet new people, make new friends. Yeah, and you get to obviously have different teachers for different subjects. So unlike primary school, um, you get around five different teachers a day sometimes. Um, so you'll get to create new relationships and find out who you really get on with and stuff as well. So there's loads of extracurriculars you can take part in after school or enrichment. So there's obviously sport teams like football, netball, basketball, rugby, and then you've got sort of the you know choirs and the drama. So you can get in loads of, involved in loads of different stuff outside of your lessons, and that's obviously another opportunity for you to make new friends and meet new people. Um, there's also, as we touched upon earlier, the pupil leadership team, which is a chance for you the students to uh, make a difference in the school, as the voice heard. Yeah, and basically, um, we won't be here by the time you get there. But we have loved our time at Penketh, we've loved all the extracurricular, all the people leadership team, our lessons, meeting new friends, our teachers, and we hope that you have a great of time as we have. So thank you very much and we hope to see you in September. Good afternoon, my name is Lacey Muir and I'm the Chair of Governors at Penketh High School. More importantly, I'm a parent governor. My daughter has attended Penketh since September 2015, and she's currently in year 11, her last year there. All the time she has been there, I have been absolutely delighted with the progress she has made. I became a governor in March 2016 and took on the role as chair earlier this year. When we moved to Warrington in January 2015, we had no real prior knowledge of the town or the schools. So as anxious parents, we actively sought feedback from neighbours and parents. 
and anyone else we could engage with. Much of the feedback about Penketh was negative, and naturally those remarks weighed heavy, and we formed a fairly fixed opinion before we visited. We arranged to go on the school walk around. What a revelation that was. We were left in absolutely no doubt that the drive and passion of the leadership team was building a caring and nurturing environment where our daughter could thrive in a disciplined and structured way. No one disguised the fact that the school's results and track record on discipline were not where they wanted it to be. But after having some very frank conversations over the achievability of the plans, our concerns were eased. We have not regretted that decision for one moment. The principal, Mr. Carling, is now three years into his role and through his team's hard work, Penketh has gone from strength to strength. He and his lead senior leadership team make no apology for having high expectations of all of our students, regardless of their academic capability. His energy, enthusiasm and passion shine through. We believe that all staff at Penketh give over and above to the school in time, effort and care. And never more has that been shown through the lockdown period we've recently been through. Mr Carling and his team still ensure there is a nurturing environment for all pupils and rightly expect high standards from everyone. Prior to lockdown, Penketh was in its third year of offering enrichment sessions. These were held at lunchtime and there were over 50 choices as wide and diverse as Mandarin, Latin, art, film club, astronomy, countdown and choir, all of which were hugely popular with our students. This was something that Ofsted inspectors were extremely impressed with. As many of you will know, we were visited by Ofsted on the 25th and 26th of February this year. They spent their time with Mr Carling and teachers, but mostly with our amazing young people. Lessons were observed. They spoke to them in and out of lesson time and were blown away by how supportive the school is, while still ensuring there is a challenging environment to allow our students to succeed. I was incredibly proud to receive our good judgment and continue to work with Mr Carlin to continue to improve. Prior to lockdown, our school made sure all students were able to access Teams and as such, we were ready to give brilliant virtual lessons once schools were closed. I was privileged to be able to observe these through my daughter. The engagement by teachers were one, was wonderful and a very easy rapport began to build via technology. Teachers who were not confident in this medium began to thrive and found a new way to teach. Students were encouraged to message if things were tricky and our teaching staff seemed to be permanently available. We have furthered this proposition in case this happens again. In normal times, I would encourage every parent to take a close look at themselves, close look for themselves at what is happening at Penketh. They are very active on social media and also see past the exterior of the ugly building and visit the school on a working day. However, we live in strange times, so now hopefully you will get a good feel of our school through our open evenings. It's a joyous place to be, full of lively pupils, caring and challenging staff, and a senior leadership team who are ensuring their students achieve better results and emerge as better adults each and every year. It's a school I love to go into, and I'm very proud to be Chair of Governors. Thank you. OK, so thank you very much. Um, at this stage, we've sort of given you the virtual tour uh, and, and Jill and I, I, I'm pleased to say, are going to be able to take some questions. I'm absolutely thrilled that Jill has joined me because I hate talking to a camera on my own in a room. It's, it's very unsettling. Um, so so obviously we've had a number of questions throughout the evening, which which we're sort of going to touch on one or two that, that we've, we've, we've answered, but we feel as though perhaps we could expand our answers on uh, rather than just on the text console. One thing I did want to sort of um, point to really is a banner that's at the bottom of your screen. Hopefully um, it's just some, some some breaking news that, that came through uh, yesterday afternoon. And we, we've obviously circulated it on social media uh, today because we're very pleased to be able to say that um, the Government Initiatives IQ, which is an organisation that the publish and distribute government reports, um, are producing an education guide this year. Um, and they, they, they're going to include us within that and recognise us as, as 100 top performing and improving school for 2020, which, which we're absolutely thrilled about, of course. Um, obviously, for me, it, it's, it's really important that the staff get the recognition um, for, the, for the transformational work that they've undertaken uh, over, over such a short period of time and, and following, obviously, best outcomes in, 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 in summer 2019, um, more than likely topping that again this summer. 
you know, Ofsted, uh, get, getting a good at Ofsted and this as well. I think it really is is, is worthy recognition. So we're really pleased and, and thrilled with that, really. Um, one point that we, we wanted to pick on, there was a question that, that came through regarding maths, which I think we covered in the presentation, but I will just elaborate. Um, the, the question was around um, in the Ofsted report of 2015. Uh, it cited that maths results were not good enough, but there's nothing in the in the latest report about that. Uh, I think we need to point to the fact that uh, in terms of maths outcomes uh, and Ofsted, that's true. In 2015, it, it was referenced that they weren't good enough. It was also referenced in 2013 that they weren't good enough, and 2010. So, so those sort of three consecutive Ofsted inspections. And I think that that really highlighted where the school was prior to 2017, when we sort of took on the, the process of, of school improvement. And um, obviously, as I touched on, and Mr. Farrow touched on in, in his own presentation, uh, we're now one of the top performing departments in the town. Um, the maths departments here have been have been nominated in a, a you know, shortlisted to, to a group of 10 schools nationally for, for um, best math departments of the year, the, the TESS Awards, uh, which is a, a national award. And, and, and we're the only school that represents a, a Northwest, a Northwest institution. So we're really pleased with that. And again, you know, that that's that's well deserved recognition for the work that, that that team in particular have done to really drive standards in that department and, and transform that department to, into a really high performing, high performing team, uh, which which produces excellent outcomes which can only benefit our young people going forward um we've had a question about about the remote offer and i know again lace I, I touched on that in my presentation but lacy uh, our chair of governors also uh, touched on that and i'll just explain how that how that looks really um so obviously prior to, to sort of lockdown in, in march um we sort of got an inkling that we were going to be closed at, at some stage. Uh, the writing was on the on the wall, really. So proactively, we, we trained in the week before lockdown. We trained up all of the staff and all of the pupils on Microsoft Teams. It was something that we were we were going to introduce, but we were probably maybe eight months away from from when we were deciding to introduce that. But we, we felt that it was the right time to do so. Um, given the, the circumstances, we thought it was the right platform to to, to sort of facilitate remote learning. Um, what we expected from pupils at that stage was to, to undertake their usual school timetable. So get up each day, uh, log into the relevant team because um, our pupils have all got access to Office 365. So the office suite of subjects and school email as well as, 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 as teams. And they could uh, they had a team for each in, in individual class that they're part of for each subject. And we expected them to log into that, collect the work off staff and interact with staff through teams, uh, addressing any queries they had about the work that was set. Um, as it became you know abundantly clear that, that we were going to be in a, a lockdown for a lengthy period of time uh, we started looking at the best research around home uh, home learning remote learning um, and, and we've really adopted the the education um, endowment funds um, home learning home learning framework i should say um, that that really does focus on on the best strands of pedagogy that promote progress when, when people are learning away from the school site we undertook a huge insert uh, around that in 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 July uh, on walking day with staff um, to really enhance what, what it is that we were already doing that was good practice. We supported the school in, in Liverpool that hadn't managed to get a remote offer up and running uh, and, and really needed some, some, some help and advice on that. We supported them with that offering to uh, offering a training session, but also access to our own in, internal uh, inset programme. And this year we've taken that a step further. And there is a video on the website that you can sort of have a look at um, that gives a bit more information to our own pupils at this moment in time, but it will give you a bit of insight. So essentially what happens now is um, we, we've we've developed a, a booklet um, that each pupil has for all of the subject areas in, in every year group that really guides them through their learning, uh, both in class and outside the school. So if pupils have to self-isolate for, for a significant period of time, 14 days or, or, or a way to test results, they can work through the same resources and materials that pupils are working through in their class whilst in the classroom. What we do is, is, is we provide um, chronological video resources that they can work through in conjunction with the booklet that introduces the new content and again runs through the PowerPoint activities and the introduction and, and modeling, modeling of new content that pupils will get in the classroom. So it really what it means is that pupils can, can keep pace with their peers who, who are still in the classroom and when they return they're not disadvantaged. Obviously what it also means is that we've got a, a very good um, a very good uh, offer so that, that if we do have to go into a, a wider local lockdown and, and schools are closed for any, any period of time, we can quickly transition to that for all pupils. And again, we've undertaken training with, with, with both staff and pupils uh, again this year. So just to, to, just to enhance our, our description of the, the remote offer, really.
I think another couple of questions have come through. Yeah. <clears throat> I just sorry, I'm losing my voice there. Um, I just want to also some people we've had a question about whether or not we have um, a design technology department, um, and it'll be quite abundantly obvious that we haven't included all of our departments in what we've offered. So what we've shown you so far tonight, we just physically with the time. Obviously, you're giving up your uh, your time as well. It could cover every every single department. So we're going to send up out an extra um, video of content with extra um, information around the departments that you've not seen tonight. Um, that's it. As I said, we'll come out probably towards the end of the week, and that should give you a little bit more information. Yeah, we, we were mindful of. Obviously, this is a two-hour session. We know that that's quite a heavy investment of time when looking at a screen and um, so so obviously what we what we try to do is, is display as much as we possibly can we're also vastly aware that on the actual open even as well i guess itself and um, parents don't get to go around and see every department again because of of, of the number of departments that we have so we, we will make sure that you get get copies of those videos as well uh, but yes we do have a dt department and we also have food tech as well um be honest about food tech food tech was not on the curriculum prior to me taking over it had been removed by the previous principal um, it was something when i took it over that that I was keen to reintroduce and we've done that this year so every key stage three people through to, to uh, year seven through to year nine um do have food tech as part of their curriculum um and then they, they will obviously be able to choose that when they when they choose their options for for key stage four um question uh, are year sevens put into sets straight away from sat results um no uh, we, we we sort of adopt a process where um for for a short period of time um they are within their form we do that for, for a couple of reasons really one is to, to strengthen the bond within the form obviously this year it's been particularly important because pupils couldn't undertake uh, transition events on our school site with, with their form uh, as they normally would we, we did that remotely which was great because through teams they could see each other and, and interact but obviously it's not the same as being on site and, and really meeting those 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 people um so that that's one of the reasons to, to form sort of those bonds in form uh, also it allows us to uh, to undertake some baseline assessments with pupils as well um obviously sats are a key driver in terms of our setting process and that does happen very quickly into the year but certainly it, it's it's not it's not the case in the first instance it's it is within sort of two to three weeks uh, prior prior to uh, prior to us undertaking the assessments uh, the baseline assessments in in course subjects um just to take pick up there from something Mr Carlin said we obviously there's a question coming as well about um, the transition visits that normally take place we normally have the not the sort of a variety of transition events including any extra events for anyone who we feel that that might be suitable for obviously this year that was impossible to have them on school site um, with the school closures that were happening at the time through teams and through all of our we were lucky enough to really be trained up on all this stuff quite early on um, and we were able to offer quite a number of transition events there was events with form tutors there were events with their forms there was events where they had um, example lessons a couple of times um, there was transition booklet sent home um, I could speak quite confidently about that because I am the transition manager so um, it's something that took up quite a bit of our summer time and over the summer and our year seven pupil we run a summer school which we were able to run in September this year um, and our year sevens speak very highly of um, how confident they felt when they arrived to us in year seven and um, the information pack that I've sent out has got some of our year sevens talking about that and talking about how it's really helped them to settle in including that time with their form has really helped them feel um supported which is obviously massively important to us at all times but particularly this year i think i think jill undersells herself there <laughs> in terms of the the the, the investments in, in in time regarding the uh, regarding the transition events i think obviously what we realized very quickly is that we you know we had a a number of our year seven pupils who were out of school for, for a lengthy period of time and very nervous about joining a new school without really having that um without really having that that sort of engagement um with with, with their, their their new peers if you like or or, or their, their form tutors 
we obviously it goes without saying I think that we want people on site we want them to experience school we want them to get to get used to the environment because that that supports an effective transition process but what Jill managed to do was undertake not you know not just one not just two but but three or four transition days she's very she's very <laughs> She's blushing at this point, but three or four transition days where pupils could undertake a science lesson, undertake a math lesson, under, and that was, you know, that was all remote, but it just allowed people to see the different departments, meet a number of staff, uh, and we were really pleased actually with, with how that went in terms of the, the, the remote offer. But of course, you can't substitute for getting the pupils actually on, mm. on school sites. I guess in short, the answer to that to the question that was posed is we hope we can undertake yeah. those things. Obviously, it'll be it'll be dependent on on the current scenario and certainly upon upon guidance issued to school from central government. Um, what remote offer do you provide to pupils if there isn't a lockdown to your education? Needs? OK, so that again, that's a, a good question. I think, again, just to follow on from what I said at the moment, we've we I mean, we, effectively what we've done is we, we've put a, a booklet together for every single uh, every single pupil for all of the modules they they undertake in every single subject that really does frame that learning um so that pupils can follow that learning journey there is also a digital version of the booklet created by staff that lives on teams alongside a video resource for every single lesson introduced by our own staff and in some cases also providing uh, external video support as well but predominantly by our own staff so that pupils are getting the the content that, that their peers will get in a classroom so when they go off from school, whether it be for a fixed period or waiting a test or, or a result or have to self isolate, or if we go into a lockdown scenario, people will still have their booklets to work through the lessons um, with the, uh, the, the the sort of pre reading for lessons, the knowledge organizer included, included in that, um, the assignments and the tasks uh, and, and the activities, but also the video content that, that, that pupils will be getting in their usual lessons. Um. I don't know if you want to talk a little oh, bit that's around. A, yeah, that's a really uh, that's something that came up last night as well. Yes. Really, um, there was a couple of people. I know a couple of people have said tonight they're a bit worried about, about not getting a place at the school. And one thing that came up last night in particular that, that I guess we haven't really covered is is uh, the concept of feed the schools and people being worried about if they're not in a particular school whether or not they get a place here. I think I think what's what's really important to say is that. Um, feed the schools that really exist, <laughs> you know, for want of a, a better phrase. We take from it from a, from a range of, of, of primary schools, um, but it's also true that if you go to a TCAP primary school, that doesn't mean that you get a priority for coming to our school. Uh, much in the same way that if you went to uh, I don't know a primary school in the Omega Trust, for example, um, that that wouldn't prevent you from coming to our school. So in terms of in terms of feeder schools, it, it's not about that. It's about the admissions criteria, and obviously it's about the number of people who put us down as as a particular preference. Um, Obviously, first, first, first preference being 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 priorities uh, for, for 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 enrolling into, into our new year seven. Our facilities, sir. Do you want to say some more things about that? We we can say some more about the facilities. Uh, again, I think it's it's things that 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 Lacey um, that Lacey covered, uh, and obviously I, I sort of touched on my own in my own presentation as well. Um, yeah, look, we you know we we hold our hands up. You know, I think I think. It, it would be crazy of me to sit here and go, I don't know what, you, I don't know what you're talking about. The buildings are, you know, we understand that the that, that, that people looking at the buildings possibly look at the school from, from outside and think it must be relatively run down. Hopefully some of the pictures that you've seen as part of the presentations have demonstrated that actually the, the, the environment within the building uh, is is uh, is very welcoming and, and, and sort of a nice learning environment. Um, Obviously, there's this on the Sway document that we sent out uh, when Jill sent that across to me before we issued it, and I was I was sort of watching it. Um, one of our Year Seven pupils actually commented on how clean the space is, and that was that was that was really nice to hear because obviously that's something that they they've picked up on and and, and that they're pleased with. And um, so we we do tend to to spend a lot of our resource and and and, and put a lot of time and effort into making sure that the environment in which pupils operate inside the school. Um, really is a good place for them to be and um, we recognize that the, the, that the site generally could do with some updating I, I can promise you and assure you that we are working in the background on that we have made some improvements obviously we, in, the, in the last 12 months we put a a nice new covered seating area for lunch um for for, for people's on one yard uh, we've put i'm sure people have seen it you know a new fence that's going down sort of the footpath 
Um, so, you know, we are making those improvements, but I think what people are asking me is, will there be mass improvements? Uh, and again, that's something I, I can assure you we're working on as much as we possibly can. Uh, but I can assure you as well that the, the environment inside the school is is, is welcoming and, and a nice place to be for pupils. And I would recommend you come on a tour to see that for yourselves. Just linked to that, um, you should have received this the information packet to Sway document. If you click on the link that I've emailed to you, it should send you straight there. I know there's been a few issues with the form um, uh, to book a tour, but could you, if you could possibly do it through the form, that would really help me just make sure that I give you the tour dates that you really would um, best suit you. However, if that's not working, because I realise there has been a few problems for some people, if you do email me to openevening at penkethigh.org, I will make sure that I'll just manually add that and make sure. Now, I know there's been a few questions as well around the numbers of people for the tours. We're trying to keep the numbers low just to cover guidance. So we have asked you to try to just keep it down to, to two people per family. Um, but obviously, if that's an issue, I know um, we have twins, for example, and that's a bit mean to send one twin and not the other. Um, obviously, we will accommodate that. It's just we're just trying to work not only with what we're in now at the moment with the guidance, but preempt guidance that might be coming as well, just to make sure we're keeping everybody safe. Please don't think it's because we don't want you on site, because as Mr Carlin has said already, having people on site is is a, is what we want. We don't want to. I'd rather have you here tonight than be speaking to a, a, a strange room. Yeah, speaking to, to a camera is, is not really <laughs> how we operate. We much prefer to speak to people. Um, Really, I mean, one thing I, I do want to touch on that came up last night it hasn't come, come up this evening, um, but I, I thought it was a really inter interesting question actually, and I hope this this hasn't come across this way. Um, a question that came up last night was around um, whether or not we've still got the passion to, to seek further improvements, Ooh. and I thought that was a really yes. you know a, a pertinent question really. Um, absolutely, we have we have an we have an appetite um, to continue to, to, to drive forward. Um, our passion is not is not the an outcome that we achieve or or, or a number that that, that comes that comes um, that comes as an output from GCSEs. Our passion is the pupils, and our passion is is making sure we provide them with the very very best experience. So we are continually always thinking in line with our three strands of academic development, holistic development, and, and life chances. What can we do next? What can we do next? What can we do to improve? How can we make that better? There is an appetite not just from myself, not just from the leadership team. But from every member of staff, I, I can't impress to you enough, really, that this has been a collective process and you don't turn a school culture around in, in this in this space of time if everyone's not on board. And I, ca I cannot praise the staff enough, but everyone is still very much motivated to make sure that we continue to strive forward and, and, and better our experience with pupils um, because they deserve it ultimately. I think, I mean, Mr Carlin talks there about us as a staff working as a team. Well, I've been here about six years now. And I do think that one of the main things that's caused a big change in our culture is how we work together as a team with the pupils. It sounds corny, but I do think it's true. Um, we the, the pupils are really engaged in what they want to do and what we're here to offer them. I think that comes a lot through the work we do with our careers and our careers cluster. They're really aware of what they need to do once they leave school. And it's about personalising their path. And they know that they need to pass the subjects. They know that they need the support that we're offering them and they work hard together and they see that we care. And as much as they'll say moan and complain, as I'm sure you're aware of, with anyone who has any interactions with teenagers, that care that comes from us, it really helps build their progress. And I think as a team, we all work really hard together. And as much as our buildings on the outside are not, where we would like them to be you know the the community that we build inside is what's really helping to really push our progress yeah, and you know there's a really interesting point that, that jill makes there around um around pupils outward sort of opinion of school and actually you know what they're really thinking about it because teenagers are always going to say don't like school don't like school <laughs> no matter how many times you say it's the best time of your life they don't believe us but i think um i think what what, what has been absolutely evident and it's tangible in classrooms is that pupils have risen to the challenge and actually they like the structure they like the drive they like the fact that we are we are focused on on, on them being successful because we want the best for them they understand that they can see that and, and that's evident really from 
not only the the improvement in conduct at the school, which is significantly better, but also in terms of the the, the vast improvements in engagement. Uh, pupils understand their responsibility and it is an absolute joy to walk around this school and go from room to room and see young people engaged in learning and taking responsibility for their own success. I, I can't I can't tell you how much I, that, that, that that is the best part of my job, really. Um, and, and, you know, the pupils themselves, um, as much as they moan about school, they demonstrate to us every day that they get it, they understand it and actually they, they, they really do enjoy it as well. So that's fantastic. We've got a question. Yeah. If the building is to be updated or refurbished, will the school remain open? Yes, one hundred percent. I would, I would not want to be in a position where we are are not educate, educating the children. Um, not because we don't want to build an or, or refurbish if that's the terms, but because we don't want that disruption to their education. Um, I think if if something is going to happen, um, then then we would we would be very careful on how we how we work that. That's not to say that I'm saying something is going to happen. I want to be very clear on that as well. I don't want to overpromise and deliver. Um, but if that was to happen, then then we you know we we certainly wouldn't be looking to uh, to disrupt the, the education of young people. Have we got any more questions? I think we've got. Well, I'm saying I think we've covered everything. If if there are any more questions, if if you feel like you want to share them now. Obviously, we'll be here for the next couple of minutes, but please, if you think tonight or oh, forgot to ask that or um, I wanted to know a little bit more about something in particular, if you email me, I'll make sure that uh, we answer any questions that that you might have. Um, and if if we have forgotten, I really do apologise if we've missed out any of your questions. And if you could just ask us again or well, um, I think email. I, th I think if we just if we summarise that, that maybe will give people time to yeah. you know put anything. In on the question panel or the, I think it's called a text console I think that's the <laughs> I think that's the the official term um but really just we just want to say thank you very much you know we, we understand that that we've not been in a position to be able to do an opening that, that probably you want you know you probably want to come and and meet the staff face to face we want to meet you face to face you know uh, you probably want to be on the school site and, and and really understanding um sort of what the what, what the ethos feels like on the ground and that's why we, we sort of recommend the tours um but thank you very much for, for taking the time not only to register but also to time out of your what i'm sure are busy lives to be able to uh to be able to to, to sort of listen this evening and, and and you know go through all the information and ask those really really important questions as i said in my powerpoint earlier um this is the start of a dialogue um we need to make sure that 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 we provide you with as much information as possible to make an informed choice that, that's right for you and your family. It is important that you make that right choice um, because ultimately, you know, it is five years. It's not it's not a lifetime, but it's a very important five years in the development of young people. So you need to be confident with the, the choice that you make for this for the for the school uh, that you want them to attend. Um, and obviously we want to make sure that we, we give you as much information to make that informed decision. So as I say, please do feel free to pick up the phone. We'll always get back to you. Drop us an email uh, or, or email email Jill uh, and, and book a tour, and, and we'll do all that we can to make sure you get everything uh, everything sort of addressed and, and all the all the queries answered really. And I think that all that remains to say. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. And oh. we we look forward. Yeah. I would train. Indeed. <laughs> uh, we 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 look forward to uh, to meeting some of you in person. I look forward to seeing the pupils in September. All the best. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye.